Lock's Quest was originally released in 2008 for the Nintendo DS, and now in 2017 it's been remastered for modern systems. But is this a strategic victory, or is this one tower that we should just let get destroyed? Lock's Quest is a nice mix of real-time strategy, tower defense, and action. In the game, you play as Locke, who grows up in a small village along with his sister. There had been a great war in the past, but there had been peace for a while until the evil Lord Agony has risen a clockwork army and has started attacking villages and the kingdom itself, putting the safety of the people at risk. Locke sets off on an adventure. Soon after his small village is attacked, his sister goes missing, and he ends up joining the resistance to stop the clockwork army. The game presents a decently told story with actually a surprising amount of length to it. There are towns that you'll get to explore and talk to villagers in order to progress the story, but a bulk of the game is the action and combat sequences. You'll travel to many different areas where you'll be able to set up defenses in order to defend certain points or people or sometimes having to take certain points from the enemies or destroy a certain number or a certain type of enemy. There's boss encounters thrown into the mix in certain areas and there are a lot of battles. In fact, the game takes place with each battle being a different day and there are over 70 days worth of battles that you'll get to compete in. They change up the styles of battles, though for the most part it will be building up your defenses and making sure you're able to hold a certain point until the time ends up running out where you are declared the victor. In order though to be successful, you're going to have to manage your source materials well enough that you'll be able to defend it, sometimes for multiple battles in a row. You always start off a new area with a certain amount of source to build your initial defenses, but sometimes you may have to go several battles in a row, and if you run out of sources, you won't be able to build things up, making the battles a lot more difficult. Thankfully, if you get to a point where you are completely stuck and unable to finish a fight, you can reset the map, going back to day one on whatever particular map you're on in order to help refill your resources and try over again. While you're given that initial amount of source to use, you do gain more every time you defeat an enemy. When you defeat one, they end up dropping a bit more that you're able to gather, which is automatically going to come to you as long as you're within a general vicinity of it. You'll then use that extra source you gathered in order to keep your defenses up and be able to build new ones as you get farther on each map until eventually making it to the next map where the process starts over again. If you're a veteran of tower defense, you'll be able to jump right in and probably successfully be able to complete mission after mission with relatively no problem. Well, I struggled a tiny bit at first because I didn't know how each of the different types of cannons and setups you could do ended up working, whether or not I should spend more time building up walls in a row or build up cannons or how I should set things up. But once I kind of got the hang of things after only a few battles, I started to breeze through the earlier parts of the game and really started to enjoy it. There's of course not one 100% right way in order to complete the battle, so experiment and figuring out what works best against certain enemies, certain setups, and the like is part of the fun for sure. There's a good variety to the weapon types, such as ones that cause explosion effects, poison effects, slowing down your enemies, straight up cannons to blast enemies, and ones that are more specific to types of enemies, like anti-air ones for flying enemies. There's also traps for you to use, such as poison traps that if anyone gets near it'll affect everything in that radius, ones that can cause anti-magic field so magicians won't be able to cast their magic, and ones that hit enemies that specifically crawl under the ground in order to try to get behind your defensive walls. Once the battle begins though, you're unable to build any new defenses, though you are able to repair them as they are taking damage throughout the battle. You also though get into the fray by being able to run up and attack the enemies. You get new abilities that Locke is able to use throughout the course of the game, such as being able to drain the health of enemies or a lightning spell that can hit every enemy on screen. You mash the X button to keep sending lightning bolts down for a small period of time which can greatly end up helping you in tight situations. The initial combat will have you running up to enemies and you get close, pressing the X button will initiate you slowly starting to hit them, but then there are strings of button presses at the bottom of the screen. If you're able to successfully pull those off, you end up dealing more damage. As you progress through the game, you'll slowly start to get more weaponry that you'll be able to use, different types of traps, and even material to build your defenses out of. The enemies also are slowly introduced to you and there are harder versions of the enemies as you get even farther into the game. One interesting thing is that the camera isn't locked on lock. 
Instead, you actually control it using the right stick to move it around. And this can be a little bit awkward at times. Thankfully, you can press the R3 button in order to instantly pull it back to wherever lock is currently located. But I did have a little bit of problems here and there in more intense areas being able to quite see everything that was going on on a particular map. There is a mini map in the corner though that tried to alleviate some of this so you can kind of see all your defenses and the enemies that are slowly starting to pour in. I'm actually surprised at how hard the game was for me to actually put down, as well as its length being as long as it was. There is a trial and error period for sure. If you end up failing on the first map and have to start over, don't feel bad. You'll probably just better resource manage and have no problem getting through it the second time around. From the technical side of things though, the game did run smoothly, I didn't run into major glitching or crashing or slowdown of any sort. There, there was a couple little minor graphical hiccups here and there, such as enemies being defeated, but not disappearing or breaking apart the way they were supposed to from time to time, which became confusing in some of the bigger battles, but it was something completely minor. Locks Quest is available now for $19.99 on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, and of course was originally released back in 2008 on the Nintendo DS. Unfortunately though, it does not feature a full trophy list or a platinum. Overall, Locks Quest is a darn good game that I'm actually kind of mad that I didn't play back in the day. I bought a copy so many years ago but never got around to playing it, but now that I finally have, I have thoroughly enjoyed it for sure, though it's not going to be for everyone. With everything said though, I'm going to be giving Locks Quest on the PS4 an 8 out of 10. But anyway guys, it's going to wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course I hope you enjoyed.